Good morning. Today is a new day and the fish are still alive. So do you know what? It's going to be a good day. And I can hear a bobcat working, which is always a bonus. Yes, it's the wrong one still. Yes, it's the wrong one, but at least something's working. Don't even look at me. S160 bossing, scraping out. trailer it will just go forward whereas the bigger one will not um so that is also something to consider when thinking about just having one bobcat and something else and with the little one it is that desperate that roy has just said grab the diesel key and we'll fill it up before we put the shear grab on because obviously the extra weight of the diesel in the back is going to make it less likely to tip over which it's very likely to do Don't even look at me. We're not speaking. That there is a two meter shear grab. It is completely oversized for that machine. Obviously it goes well on this one that we're still not speaking to. Um, but yeah, you get like a one and a half meter or something for that one. And it's just completely inappropriate, but it's what we've got. Uh... Oh man. Jesus Christ, the slurry is full. And we'd only got one tractor going on. Now I'm going quietly. I know I was taking the mic and now I'm being serious. It's just really bizarre. I don't know how I live my life. Do you see that cow there? That little bullock. The stores, the stores. That little store. He's really stiff on his back end. Don't know why. Can't figure it out. He's not lame at all. He's just stiff. I just think he's too old to get a bit of joint tail. And every time I put the cows through, he carries on being stood there. I'm wondering if he's bullied, but he's definitely stiff on the back end. classic case of Charlotte should have waited for Roy to come and give her help because he literally ran off on me and then tried to kick me. Anyhow, it's done now. Um, that was some anti-inflammatories. I hope that he just gets a little less stiff. Um, he's clearly uncomfortable because he's hanging around on his own. So today we are going to have a go at putting some more slurry out, obviously, with one tractor, that one there and with the smaller bobcat on the whisk. So that'll be interesting, if anything, to see whether it works on the whisk, because everything about it is smaller. But in the end, that is the bobcat that will be here and we'll have a load all of some description. Come on, boys. Hup, hup. Yeah, we'll have a load all of some description and the smaller bobcat. So it'll be interesting to see if it works well on the whisk because that's what it'll be used for. That calf there. I have um, a video of it being born and running around and it's really cute. <laughs> His mum is the one with like the big thick blaze. We call him Malcolm. Um, Cause she, she came from Malcolm across the road. And she's a belter of a cow, honestly, she's, she really is a belter. Like, I know you've 
all got a bit accustomed to seeing me messing around with tractors and stuff, but that ain't me. I am about the animals. So this is the whisk if you haven't already watched this video go and have a look at it it was a few days ago at like last week even we've had the pto taken off the whisk and had it put onto an adapter plate to fit on the bobcat and it's now um like powered by a hydraulic pump possibly needs a different pump because it was zapping all the power from the bobcat now this bobcat isn't as powerful as the other one this is So to whisk effectively, it needs to be in between there and there because that is where you pull the slurry out and obviously that's where you mix in. I don't know whether um, it's just going to kill the bobcat. Have you seen the state of that doggy? If I pet it, it better be dirty. Adiola takes walks like a geezer. Throw a streak, it will go and retrieve her. I'll put in here a previous video of what it sounded like stood here. That mix in. I was stood on this corner. I'm quite sure I've got a video. Right, so if you listen to this, And then I'll put a video in of what it sounded like with the tractor. It stinks, it's not good. It can kill people, it can kill animals. It's bad for the environment. So I think, and Roy also agrees, this doesn't sound like it's trying with the engine any more than the 250 was trying. So I don't think the pump has any, uh, any relevance to the size of the engine. I really don't. I think it's to do with the high flow pump which actually no one seems to understand anything about them whatsoever. If you do, give us a hint because we're not mechanics. As I said yesterday, definitely not a mechanic. Family of mechanics and I'm not one. And definitely Roy isn't. Like, it doesn't sound like it's struggling. It just sounds like it's purring away. So Roy's just down here putting the case on the tanker pence per kilo that tractor is smashing the valtra which is still broken down we're going to take it to toppings later and drop it off i'm not going to slag it off it is basic it is very manual it's not the comfiest but you know what it's working and it's never done us any harm as far as i can remember it hasn't actually had any problems or broken down unlike the valtra that lays down every second week and was literally the price of a house up Spenny Moor. Needs a bit of lubricant. Very oh, dipstick. So when that pump works, I'll show you when he turns it on. I'll turn the volume off because it's really loud. And it goes pom 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 like that and it blows spits oil out all the time. Um, so you've got to keep it topped up, literally every use. So this is it from the other side of the building. That is the bobcat in with the whisk. So boys drawing some out with the tanker there. And it's obviously meaning that there's, it's 
not touching the ceiling, if you will, and it's making it a lot easier to mix. We are under no illusions and we know that that is thick slurry. You don't need to see a spreading slurry, that's really boring. Okay, so I'm gonna update you on what my surprise um, knock me off my feet. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. What? What can you call it? My um, my uh, parcel. I'm gonna update you on what my parcel was. So a while ago, I'll put it in context. Um, a couple of years ago, I killed a calf. I tubed the calf with a stomach tube. Um, one of the old, you know, one-use bags you can get from anywhere at all. And I tubed it the wrong way. It went into its lungs and the calf died. It was every bit as awful as it sounds. Um, I was absolutely mortified. I've done numerous videos on that just because I just hope that I can somehow help other people avoid that situation because it did affect me a little bit. So one of the steps I took to getting my confidence back tubing the calves was to buy a new tubey. And that was the trusty feeder from Anti Innovations. Now, I think it was 60 quid at the time. It gave me all the confidence back and I have done numerous videos on how to use it um, just off my own back because I really like the product and I do, you know, I do use it, especially during carving time, pretty regularly. So I was totally over the moon that this company had even noticed me because um, I was making videos about their products anyway because I actually really, I really do enjoy them and I do use them and I just thought there was something that should be in the, you know, in the kit of everybody who is you know tubing calves daily and um, they got in touch a while back and said did i need anything for carving time and i just said a purple tube because the dog the dog chewed mine because that's what i use all the time and they sent me this now i i do not in any way do these videos so people send me stuff i do these videos because i enjoy doing them and I am a creative person. I enjoy making and I enjoy creating. I would do it regardless of this, but this is just incredible. So I don't want to do a video and just tell you about it for the crack. I'd rather show you it when I use it in context. So you might not see it for a while, but when it comes to carving time, lambing time, you will see it and I will use it properly and I will show you how I do it in real time um you know with real animals as it goes i just i can't yeah i'm not gonna make a situation just to make a video for you so i will show you what i got though so i got loads more of these um colostrum bags which is super amazing because what you do is you fill them with colostrum and the flat pack they go in your freezer so because the surface area of the bag is a lot bigger they defrost a lot quicker so i fortunately have a giant sink anyway um, so that's always been easy to do. But this here, this cools them down and um, like heats the milk up for you. That's incredible. That That's pretty cool. So it plums into the water and it does it itself. It's pretty cool. And it's a pasteurizer. So I've got some little bags, which are actually really handy for um, smaller things. So my friend Richard, uh, we send these bags to his farm and he then sends us back bags of colostrum. I always offer to pay him and he always says, no, 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 but I'm gonna have to make him take some money to be fair, or at least give it to his mother. It's Cause at the minute we're swapping him like rhubarb and vegetables out of the garden. <laughs> so they do tiny bags for um, sheep and stuff as well. These are the purple tubes that I was talking about. This is, this is just what I um, was short of. So super grateful for that. And a really cute little lamy tuber. Now I already have one of these. This is the silly, I already use these products. I buy them willingly and I use them and I shout about them because I like them. This is just a bonus. So I just wanted to get across to you how grateful I am because I really am. I just wanted to show you what I got. Um, and I just wanted to obviously tell them how grateful I am that they've sent it. Um, but I'll put it away because we're, we're a, a month off lambing. Um, yeah, a whole month off lambing and um, a long time off carving. So I'm going to put it away. You will see it again when it is time appropriate. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to them. It's super kind and it means an awful lot that someone actually believes in you, 
you know representing their product which is just yeah it's just crazy isn't it it is it's just crazy but like i know i've been doing a lot on tractors and things at the minute and machinery because like let's face it that's what the boys want this is what i'm about like truthfully i'm about the animals and i'm about the you know I'm about the bags of colostrum and i'm about the tubing and that's what i enjoy that's the bit that i am and i found myself very much um bending my videos to suit the view i'm never gonna pretend that i know what i'm talking about with machinery it's just never been my thing but i will however show you um mastitis in a cow and how to tube a lamb like yeah and i'll also show you how to pasteurize colostrum shameless plug shameless plug shameless plug Um, oh, that's what I have to pull with. Abuse. So we did everything we needed to do at home. And then we brought the bobcat here because obviously we're sharing. Update on the bobcat because a couple of people have asked today on Instagram. Um, it is the... It's the fuel pump has broken. Um, gonna order a new one tomorrow morning. Obviously it is Monday tomorrow. So that's good and hopefully take the tractor to Toppins, drop it off there um, and hope they can do some fixing. I've forgotten my hat, obviously I feel naked and very cold. These guys are going tomorrow. I are just going to go to Toppins to take the tractor. Um, I have just looked on YouTube before I upload this video and I now have 11,000 subscribers. Now, not all of them are watching the videos, but I am grateful for every single one anyway. Um, I can't believe that anyone would want to watch us just pottering about on a farm, to be fair. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed another day of our misery, um, and I'll see you tomorrow.